Hello, dear viewers. This is Talk to Obin. Today we are joined by Dr. Jonas Adai, an associate professor of peace studies and one of the commissioners at Ethiopian National uh, Dialogue Commission. Uh, welcome, Dr. Jonas, to our studio. Thank you very much indeed. Today uh, we are going to shed a light on the, the activities that the Commission uh, embarked on. Uh, to start with, uh, some people find it difficult to discern the difference between national dialogue, re uh, reconciliation, arbitration. Uh, what is the clear distinction between these three uh, concepts? Right, I think these people are quite right to get it confused because they all are speech acts, if you like, and they must be clearly defined, to be honest. So whenever we talk about dialogue, we talk about a process of finding the truth. So the very word dia in Greek means through or via and logos, reasoning, discussing, conversations. So dialogue is a process of discovering the truths. The process of discovering the truths. Why Ethiopia has been so much into that deep conflict for ages. Identity conflict, resource conflict, history interpretation, and so many, many, many others. So to pinpoint the precise cause, underlying cause, the structural cause, we need dialogue. So the very comprehensive meaning of dialogue definitely comprises mediation, which you have just mentioned, mediation, arbitration, negotiation, facilitation. These all are subdivisions of dialogue. Dialogue being an overarching, overarching word but those uh, techniques, such as mediation, for instance, when two parties speak their differences in the presence of said party, which is mediation, it's under dialogue. Negotiation, when the two fighting parties come face to face with each other, when they discuss, then that is negotiation, because they are talking to each other without the third party, with or without, to be honest. And arbitration, again, education, these all are part and parcel of dialogue. But dialogue is a very umbrella term that embraces all of them. It focuses on the foundations of the differences. Why those differences? Why are they there? As you may remember from South African experience, we have three truths and reconciliation commission. Why truths? Because as we said, dialogue is a process to find the truths. Unless the truths are out, people may not come to reconciliation. So as to say, I have forgiven you, I have altogether, maybe even forgotten, but let me know the truth first. Thou shalt know the truths, the truths shall set you free, as the good book says. So when people know the truth, then that gives them liberation. It liberates them, it frees them. So dialogue is taken as a process of finding the truth for those fundamental structural or root causes of conflict, disagreement, discord. And if you remember the proclamation of Ethiopian National Dialogue Commission, based on certain assumptions, such as there is deep division among the society of Ethiopia, and even on those political leaders, elite groups, party politics, and they keep on the list. So, so as to deal with these differences, the best way out is having an inclusive, impartial dialogue. So that is why we should see dialogue as a universal set, as an overarching term, whereas reconciliation as a if you like a target, an objective, a goal to be reached through dialogue, because dialogue is, as you said, a way of finding out the truths for the differences. We are going to confine our conversation on to uh, 
the commission was established by the Ethiopian parliament by proclamation number 1265, 2014. Uh, to what extent is it its mandate? Brilliant. Um, it, it has a huge mandate, to be honest. And to begin with, including or leaving no one outside of discussing Ethiopia's issues, Ethiopia as a nation, Ethiopia as a country, if you like, why do we see such differences? Why do we see in particularly political culture the question of legitimacy? If you happen to read Dr. Dima Nagel's text, um, his PhD thesis we were discussing with him the other day, uh, it is titled Contested Legitimacy. If you happen to see most research, we have the contestation over Ethiopia's legitimacy, the, even the state formation itself, and power politics, power sharing, identity questions. These all are out there. So the mandate of the, the, the commission is to really include those people who feel discontented, those who feel resentment, who feel that they are marginalized, and then bringing them on board and asking them what they think the sources are. When you listen to them, then yes, you can unearth the buried truths, and then you can come. So the mandate of the, the commission, as, as we already just described, inclusively involving all the stakeholders of Ethiopian society, so as to deal with those difficulties and of course open the way for sustainable peace and development in this country. And it also has legal mandates, for instance. It's not simply going to the regions and discussing pe with people because our approach is bottom-up as contrasted to top-down age-old Ethiopian political practices. So we don't simply leave after having discussed but we also monitor how much what we have been discussing, what, what brought us agenda for discussion is being performed by either executive or the parliamentarians. So that is part of the mandate, not only as a side simply having people on board to discuss, but also how what has been discussed is implemented and touching base. Yeah, uh, so bringing all these parties together uh, takes time. It requires energy, it demands time to be given, and uh, most of all it uh, uh, demands patience from all parties take, uh, taking uh, participation, the, those who participate in it. So uh, some may think that it is going to be a one-time activity, and uh, you have been given the term of uh, office or tenure. Uh, what states are included in it? Yeah, excellent. Sure. Uh, to make it very clear for the, uh, our, your audience or, or those who are viewing um, the, the show, we have five stages. The first is exploratory stage. The second one is preparation stage. The third one is the process stage. The fourth one is the delivery stage. The, first, the, fourth, uh, the, the fifth one, the final one, is uh, monitoring and evaluation. So if we just take very quickly the first one, the uh, exploratory uh, stage, very quickly uh, to do a sort of a scanning what has been done around the world regarding dialogue. Which ones are success stories? Which ones are failures? And why? What lessons can Ethiopia take from that? Typical examples, why the Yemenis failed whereas that of Tunisia succeeded. Why South African succeeded while the Sudanese failed? So these give us an excellent lesson for us not to repeat in the country. Just as at a, as at a glimpse, the Yemenis failed because of foreign intervention. The Sudanese failed because of internal, particularly state or government intervention. The Tunisian succeeded because it is led by, it is owned by the local people and most importantly, civics, associations, political parties, intellectuals, the media. 
because it's owned by the local people, then it was a success story. So we feel that this commission belongs to the people, it's by the people, for the people, and it is they who are the owners of it. So we learned that very big lesson. So if I continue counting why the Sudanese failed, because of heavy interference of the government. That's why we are also working with our government, but we are keeping at bay at the same time. And very interestingly, our government itself respects, to be honest with you. So these are, are, are some of the activities that we are doing, that is reading the literature and then what has been done in, in other parts of the world. Then we moved on to preparation, that is logistics, reaching out to the people, talking to the people, particularly our constituents, such as religious leaders, abagadas, youth, journalists like yourselves, entire media processes and intellectuals coming in. So from that we gather how we can proceed. And uh, the, uh, the third level, which we have just mentioned, the process, now we are really touching base on the process aspect. I, we just came from uh, Arba Minch, uh, from Arba Minch to Hawassa. We completed that and the, the previous week we did, we discussed particularly the process, how we're going, the, the, the very methodology, how we are designing our communications strategies. And these are all deliberated, debated, and of course given some feedback. So that's where we really are. And you also raise a very important question. Look, you have a lot of tasks to do. You have a huge demand and, and, and at the same time, the, the, the very uh, uh, mandate is extremely expanded, but the time is very limited. For instance, it's only three years with possible extension of that. So do you think time is enough? I think, um, as you know, it is, as you rightly implied, it's a process. It's not a one-time go and stop. No, it is. It's a process of building a political culture, peace by peaceful means, rather than whenever there is disagreement, going to the jungle, fighting, killing each other. So we are showing. Come back. Let's discuss our differences. So I think we are entrenching that new culture or new political culture, which could possibly lead to new even uh, social contracts between the society and the state. So I think these are the, the fundamentals. Our stages aside are those, those five, and our mandates definitely are there, but at the same time the terms can be also extended depending upon the way we perform. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, you have nicely uh, described the, how you are dealing with all the parties that have interest in the process. Uh, and some question that the commission might not be uh, independent and some also question that the parliament is uh, dominated by the ruling party. And I think that uh, th this has uh, given them some information how independent the commission might be. Uh, proceeding to the next question that I have, how similar or different the Ethiopian National Dialogue uh, Commission from uh, other similar institutions elsewhere? Excellent. Very quickly, to the, the, for the question of independence, I usually, of course, face this question. And as you have just mentioned, um, um, our chief commissioner or, or our, our chair happens to come from uh, Addis Ababa University Medical School, myself from Addis Ababa University Peace and Security Studies, others coming from the United Nations, others coming from civil societies. We really are there so as to contribute to what is possible for our country's stability and, of course, lasting peace. That really makes us independent. The very you know, preparation, the very willingness to serve the people we're not, we are not looking for any shortcut for political power or economic reach, but rather how to really help serve and at the same time transform our you know, Ethiopia's image from conflict to peace, from poverty to prosperity. So that is really at the background. When I come back to the comparison between Ethiopia's National Dialogue Commission with the rest of the world, I, you know, I can very quickly liken it with that of particularly the one I have just mentioned, North Africa. Uh, uh, if you just, because it is basically owned by 
the people, if you know the process, what was for under 20 million people, according to civil societies who were involved in the process, about 8,000 candidates were picked. From 8,000, about 350 were picked, all based on comments and discussions. From 750, 640 were picked. From 640, 42 people focusing, you know, their services, appropriateness of these people for the position, particularly for the, uh, to be uh, as commissioners. Uh, and finally, from 42, 11 of us were selected from that. And as you rightly also mentioned, uh, we are, of course, accountable to the parliament rather than to executives, to, to, uh, to the prime minister's office. So we are, which shows really independence, because you can see, as I already mentioned, incidentally, Dr. Dima Naga, who is also one of our bosses, representing OLF, for, for instance, Christine Tardella, representing Aben Amhara uh, National, or uh, Nama National uh, 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 Amhara, yes, movement. So, and there are many others at the same time. We're reporting to these opposition as was well ruling, and that really makes us independent. And the similarity, as I said, from with, with, with others, uh, we took, uh, you know, different countries' examples, and um, ours is totally dominated, owned, led by our people, whereas others, particularly the one we mentioned, that of Yemen, was masterminded by the Gulf Council. Mm -hmm. yeah. As a result, it failed. Mm -hmm. You can just liken ours with that of Tunisia, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Most of just their similarity. Also with that of Colombia as well. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can compare it. So the, different, then the fundamental differences are the process and the ownership. Mm -hmm. How they have been selected mm -hmm. and who owns it. These are really fundamental. When uh, we proceed to the next point, uh, experiences, most of you uh, are professors at universities and there are also uh, people in the parliament, like what you have mentioned, opposition party members are there. And especially uh, the parliament, which is uh, active right now, is uh, deemed as the only uh, uh, collection of parliamentarians elected by the people. So uh, here, I think that it, it depicts how independent it is, how account accountable it is. Uh, having said this, uh, there are theories that are developed elsewhere regarding dialogue, arbitration, negotiation, whatever, best practices across the globe. And here in Ethiopia, we have indigenous uh, conflict resolution mechanisms and negotiations. All these assets are here. Uh, how combined are these to facilitate the process? I think that is yet another excellent question, to be honest. Um, we are talking about the word ownership. This ownership can be also used metaphorically as well. Ownership, not only owning the, commis the commission as a whole, the deliberation process, but even the very knowledge base as well indigenous knowledge particularly. You know, I haven't made it very clear from the very outset, I should repeat this one here. Mm -hmm. It is bottom up, it is from grassroots level. As we go to Somali region for instance, we totally listen to the people at Somali region and uh, we also of course learned a huge lesson, even the seating arrangement to begin with. So, not really as it used to be uh, when it is a state structure, but rather sitting in a circle, expressing solidarity, and listening, listening, and listening. Because it is from the listening that you can really acquire and develop what's called appreciative inquiry, putting yourself in the shoes of others, and seeing from that angle. Because as you said, this is truth-seeking process, and finding the truth definitely liberates you, then for that, not simply what we had in, at Addis Ababa University or Oxford or wherever, but what is available at the grassroots level. How the indigenous people really think. What the causes, the fundamental causes are, 
then what are also the cures for that cause as well, the cure, the solution coming from them, how to go about as well. So indigenous knowledge for us is the cornerstone of, or, or, or if you like, a stepping stone for us to engage in. Without such indigenous knowledge base, you know, it is absolutely unthinkable to come to a lasting peace. It should be based on that, not imported knowledge. We don't hate imported knowledge, we like them. We like to have, because we are, no man is an, uh, no man is an island, according to Samuel Johnson's 17th century. But at the same time, again, in African philosophy of Ubuntu, I am, because we are. We are communal society. So indigenous knowledge for us, indigenous thinking, indigenous way of living, dealing with differences is for us really foundation of, of, of us as, as, as commissioners as well. So what is expected of Ethiopians to the success of this uh, dialogue? Brilliant. Um, number one, this is your commission. As you've been cooperating, as you have been vanguardly fighting so as to build a great Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, as you have successfully doing also defending your country survival, this commission is yours. So please do the same for the commission as well, because it belongs to you. Uh, this is a, a, a very generalized way. When I focus on particularly the media, media can heal or kill. They have the power of killing as well as healing. They can distract or they can construct. So, particularly by disseminating the information, clarifying the concept, as you rightly began from the very beginning, what's meant by dialogue? How important is dialogue in Ethiopia today for sustainable life? How it is really, really crucial to deal with differences, build a better future for all, the significance of dialogue by teaching, by organizing different panels, even inter, I'm quoting from you here, intermedia dialogue itself. This is, comes from OBN contribution in a huge panel with other media at the same time. So doing those, those things and then reaching out to the people, different languages. I wish I knew Afale Romo, then we could also ca continue Afale Romo immediately. Then on studios, mini studios, on FMs, on the community radios, on the community newspapers, and, and editors. These are local associations and in churches and mosques, the significance of discussing together, debating together, and finally coming, finding the truth through dialogue, through dialogue, because it is a path, it is a way of seeking the truth, for the truth shall set us free and peaceful. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Well, what, what sort of uh, supporters have you received so far from regional governments? Uh, because you are moving from one region to the other region, and you might have uh, been entertained in different ways. Uh, what are the pros and the cons in your interaction with these regional governments? Regional governments have been our right hands, to be honest. And the very people I'm sure we have seen as we were walking down the street today together, people were greeting and say, asking questions, how can we help you? To be honest, directly even in the streets. So regional, uh, regional governments, particularly by providing offices, but be careful, because we are independent, we should not be totally attached with government structures. We also are working with churches, mm -hmm. with universities, civil societies, or CSOs, civil society organizations, with youth, with women, with, uh, in, with uh, physically impaired personalities. So with this all we're working together, it's all inclusive, and the regional uh, governments, regional states as a whole, we were in a Romeo regional state nearly a month ago, and we were given huge support, particularly by forming focal persons, who, that, that, that's who serves as a bridge between the commission and the region, and of course the people as well. Mm. They are there to support us materially, spiritually, and of course, at the same time, uh, whenever we really need them, standing by us, and particularly teaching, preparing people for the dialogue. So their, their contribution is, is, is absolutely paramount significance. They have been doing great jobs, and we're expecting, you know, looking forward for more 
yet to come. Okay. Fascinating it is. Any, any idea that you would like to share with our viewers? Um, I'd like to share with the, your distinguished viewers that dialogue, not only for Ethiopia, even for, for Africa, because while we are rich, we are depicted as poor. Again, the new colonization is back, particularly in the, uh, the name of uh, aid or emergency or human right or democracy. So we must absolutely be aware of this. We must dialogue together. We have to find our own way. For African solution, we have Af for African problems, we have African solution. For Ethiopian problems, we have Ethiopian solutions. We are great people. We really must be able to cooperate. As we cooperate together, as we stand together, others are also out there, our friends, our, our really partners who have been helping us from outside as well. They can also cooperate with us technically, but only if we strong together. As the saying goes, united we stand. So I think we have to unite and stand. At the same time, of course, work together. And most important, the Creator, Allah or God, is also with us. So please support us with your prayers, with your support as we reach out. Please come into us and we are there. You can also comment on the processes as we go ahead. Uh, most important, the prayer is more, uh, for us essential. And may God bless you and our country abundantly. Thank you very much. Dear viewers, this was all we had uh, with Dr. Jonas Adai, an associate professor of uh, peace studies and one of the commissioners at Ethiopian National Dialogue Commission. Stay tuned to Obin Horn of Africa for more news and programs.